Hi, my name is Andy Knight and I work for Essential Computing as a technical consultant. What I'd like to do today is share with you my top five tips when migrating from your existing email archive to your new chosen platform. Our experience with archive migration is that when we first speak to customers, they've already tried the native tools that come with their existing archive. We're always faced with the same questions. Why is it so slow? How do I log the errors? And where do I go from here? The reason for this is that with most native tools, whilst they are included in the product they are currently using, there is no logging available for people. The product is also going to be single threaded. Although with one mailbox, this may be fine. When we're looking at 1,000 to 10,000 mailboxes, this is going to take a considerable amount of administration time and monitoring. Part of the problem with the existing tools producing PST files is that you've got to find someone to store them. A compressed archive solution could be 6 terabytes in size, but when you're deduplicating this and also saving to disk, you could be looking at 15 terabytes plus of storage. The other issue, of course, is that you're adding additional hops into your archive. Instead of going straight from your archive A to archive B, you're actually putting it the, the middle sector in of PST files. PST files can become corrupt, PST files can be lost, and this can cause additional problems when moving from one to the other. With any archive migration, you also need to know that the messages have been successfully migrated. Audit trails, people need for compliance reasons now, a full trail of where the messages come from and where it's been placed to. The native tools don't provide this, and in fact in most cases, don't give any record at all of what has been migrated out into the new system. Okay, so one thing with migration is that it's very easy to get caught up in what the business wants and what the business needs. However, the key thing is to understand what the end user wants and the end user needs. These are the people that are accessing these shortcuts and accessing these mailboxes on a daily basis. Different archiving solutions will do things in a different way. It's worth talking to key business people to understand how they use the system and what they currently like and dislike. These are the sort of policies that you can bring forward to your new platform, or in some cases it may be a case of training those people on how the new system will differ from the old. In the past, we've had customers who've made decisions without consulting the business first and also key users and then at the end of the migration had to go back and change policies and also incur costs and time penalties by having changes made which they didn't plan in the beginning. With every migration, one of the key factors is having a POC, which is a proof of concept. Understanding how your new platform works is one thing, but understanding how the two will fit together and how you'll be able to migrate across is one of the key factors for this being successful. A lot of customers will try and rush this. They want this done quickly so they can get everybody across to the new platform and gain credit with the business. However, this is definitely not recommended. If you rush the POC, what you may find is that problems occur later on during the live migration or when the system is live and fully signed off post-migration. Okay, so in summary, I guess what I'm trying to say is you do, really don't want to underestimate the task in hand. Archive migration is a complicated process and for a lot of customers they think that by moving the data to the cloud or using Exchange 2010 it's going to be a simple thing to do and they're going to save money both in the short term and the long term. However, this isn't always the case and archive migration is a lot harder than people think. 